Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student, and welcome to Ovi Med. Alright, so I've just finished my first ever exams of medical school. I've just finished my exam week, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how it went. So I told you in last week's video that I'm gonna let you know if how I studied was any good, but before we get into that, let me just explain to you what exams I had and how I had to do them. And if you didn't watch my video last week about how I studied for my exams, please click right here. So let's get into it. All right, so let me just talk to you very briefly about my exam structures and what exams I had to do. So if you remember from my previous videos, I have three main courses, all right? So I had anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry. However, anatomy and physiology are part of the same course, same module, if you want to call it that. It's called human form and function, but we had different exams for these two courses. So that's why I'm saying that I had kind of like five exams or three, it depends how you want to categorize them. But let me explain that to you. So let me just put that up on the screen. So on January the 12th, I had my first two exams or my first exam of human form and function. So I had in the morning, I had the anatomy SAQs and then afterwards I had the physiology SAQs. So uh, it depends how you want to categorize those. Uh, it's part of the same bigger module, but there were two different exams on uh, Blackboard, which is the uh, platform that Trinity uses for the exams. And then for Wednesday, I had my biochemistry exam. And then on Thursday, again, I had anatomy and physiology, but this time it was the MCQs. So once again, uh, you can call them two different exams or the same exam uh, if you want to for human form and function. So I had three or five depending on how I want to categorize them. So that was the schedule of the exam. But now let's look at how much they were worth and what are the in-course components that uh, participate to my grade. All right, so let's start off with biochemistry because that's just the easiest one to explain. So we have two papers, um, two big exams if you want in this course. So we have the first one, which I did two days ago, which is worth 40% of my grade. It is about uh, my whole first semester. And then the second one, which is worth 60%, and that's for the second term. So the first exam was like two days ago. And then the second one is probably gonna be in May uh, or beginning of June if the semester gets extended, but um, we'll see. And then if we move on to uh, human form and function, uh, this is where it gets a bit more complicated. All right, so let's just start uh, with the top, okay? So we have the SAQs, then we have the MCQs, and then we have the practical component. And so for the SAQs, if you remember from our previous videos, in anatomy, what we have is cadaveric pictures, and then we have to identify either the muscles, uh, the nerves, the function, or uh, clinical relevance of some item that is shown on the picture. And then uh, in physiology, what we have is more about explaining concepts, like explaining the neurotransmission, or explaining like um, what is the role of some specific uh, hormones, let's say. And then moving on to the MCQ sections, well, the MCQs, I guess you're all familiar with those, it's just uh, very specific questions on uh, you know details and stuff that you've seen in class, there's nothing much to say about that, they're just normal MCQs. Uh, they don't have codes, uh, I know that some schools uh, like I had once during my undergrad, it's like a little bit of A, a little bit of C, some of E, but not D, you know, these kind of codes that you have in your answers. Um, these were like straightforward, you know, like only one answer possible and that's it. So uh, that's cool because if you ever did an MCQ exam with codes, you're gonna know that it's not fun at all and it's just annoying. So yeah. All right, so then moving on to the practical component. Uh, well, for anatomy, actually the exam is very similar to what we had for the SAQs. Uh, it's once again, pictures of uh, cadavers, uh, of specific dissections, and they're gonna ask us specific questions on those. And then for physiology, uh, that was different though, because uh, we did a few labs, one on hematology, we did one on muscle contraction, on uh, nerve conduction velocity. So we had like very specific questions on those. We had also histology. So yeah, that was different from the physiology SAQ exam that we had. All right, so moving on to the next section of this video. How did I do my exams? Well, as you might notice, my exams uh, were done from home online here in Canada. This is for my first semester of medical school and it was done because of the current coronavirus situation. And so we had to use this software. It's called Proctorio. Uh, I don't know if some of you have used it already, but what it does basically is that uh, it records your screen, you have a microphone, and it also records you while you do the exam uh, through your computer webcam. 
So I'm not sure how much of this I can show you, but uh, let me just give you a really quick example of uh, the steps you gotta do in order to do your exams. All right, so first things first, you need your student ID with you. Uh, and then before you begin, uh, they have uh, a few sets of rules and how it works, basically the, the proctoring. And here it says that you cannot have uh, two monitors. So I'm just gonna unplug my monitor and then just have the exam in front of me. By the way, Proctoro is an extension on Chrome. So now, as you see right here, it's just gonna start um, doing the checks. So it's gonna see if the webcam works, it's gonna see if the microphone works, then here it's asking me to share my screen. So then uh, once you've done your initial checkup, so you have a good webcam, microphone, connection, and you've shared your screen, then they're gonna ask a picture of you as well with your student ID, so I need to show that. And then the final step is obviously to show your desk. So you gotta turn your computer around and uh, show your workspace. And um, at any moment during the exam, an invigilator can just come in, connect to your exam and ask you to turn the camera around. And so yeah, I think it's a good system because uh, it can you know, monitor uh, you during your exam so they know that you're not just gonna take your book and open it up in front of uh, the exam to look up some information. Uh, but in short, that's how it goes basically, the uh, pre-check of the exam and how the exam is done basically. The only problem with the system is, uh, well, at least so I've heard, is that every time you move, uh, it's gonna flag the system. So I'm not really familiar with how it works, but let's say for example, you just wanna drink a little bit of water, uh, well, it's gonna give a warning to like whoever is watching your exam. And so also if you just like move your hands and stretch, that's also gonna trigger the exam. So I'm not really sure like if they're gonna check every single flag because we're like 180 students taking the exams and we had three of those and for all like two hour long. And so, yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do with that, uh, but there, there must have been quite a lot of flags, so yeah. So anyways, this was my first time ever using Proctorio. The only time that I used a similar system was when I was doing my Casper exam. So for those of you who don't know what the Casper exam is, uh, it's basically an exam that tests your, uh, like your soft skills. Uh, if you're able to deal with like difficult ethical uh, situations and stuff like that. And it's necessary to enter medical school and dental school uh, in Canada and some states in the United States, uh, but I'm not sure. And it's also used in residency by the CARMS, which is the system that uh, medical students use to match into their residency programs. Some programs do ask for uh, the CASPER exam. And so, um, yeah, that's the only similar exam that I've had where, I've, where I was being recorded and uh, it was a microphone. Um, and then moving on to the uh, next thing that I had to do was turn it in. Uh, so some of you might be familiar with turn it in. Uh, it's usually used for essay questions um, and stuff like that, or papers that you need to submit. Um, I've never used it personally before, um, but this time we had to um, send our papers to turn it in. And so turn it in basically is an AI system which detects the percentage of similarity between what you wrote and uh, a database that they have in their system. And so if you like copy, let's say copy pasted like a whole paragraph from a PDF from like a manual, then it's gonna be flagged and you're probably gonna fail because you just copy pasted and that's uh, cheating. But something that I'm not sure about though is if you learn off like a cascade uh, by heart that's written in the book because it just will explain like let's say you have like a G protein coupled receptor and then you have like all the like cyclic AMP, uh, PKA and then uh, all these different like second messengers. Well, there's not a hundred ways of explaining the same mechanism. So I'm not sure like how that's gonna work. But anyways, I guess it's just like a extra safety feature. So I had to submit my uh, physiology SAQ and my biochemistry SA exam. Uh, the MCQ, well, obviously you didn't write anything, so you don't need to submit it to turn it in. All right, so now then, let's get into the juicy part of the video. How were my exams? Like, were they harder than expected? Were they easier than expected? Did I study enough? Did I study too much? How were they? So let's start off with the anatomy SAQs. So I've talked quite a lot about the anatomy SAQs on this channel. Uh, I've made a whole video only about the anatomy SAQ exams, so please go and check that out. Um, but how were they? Well, they were pretty fair. I mean, we had like a certain uh, uh, sets of images that we had to study about uh, cadaveric pictures and we knew that the questions were going to be out of these uh, specific images. So um, if you just learned off every single thing that you possibly could learn about uh, these specific structures. So, you know, if, uh, for example, in last week's video, you know, I showed you a picture of the posterior shoulder. Well, if you learn off everything you need to know in that picture, like 
uh, what are the insertion points of the trapezium or like the dealt with the uh, innervation and blood supply and stuff like that. And so yeah, the clinical questions are often quite a bit harder and you really need to go like beyond what the course like shows you or uh, the PowerPoint. So you gotta do a bit of research on your own. So for those, I'm not sure uh, I got all of them, but yeah, I guess we'll see. But so yeah, the anatomy ACQs uh, were fine. They were exactly what I expected. Um, I had one hour to complete them and yeah, it was more than enough. Uh, I already had like two practice exams sort of things because we had um, two lab exams for anatomy, two lab tests if you want uh, during the semester. So um, I knew exactly what to expect and yet there were no surprises really. So then moving on to the physiology SAQs. So if you remember from my previous week's video, I told you that we had access to previous year's exam. And so with those, what I did, uh, I prepared like a few questions uh, on the topics that come the most often on the exam. Like topics that would very often come are like uh, muscle contraction, uh, how nerves work um, on some, uh, you know, like hormones, how are they regulated and stuff like that. And so I prepared a few uh, questions for every single topic and then I sort of generally reviewed the rest for my MCQ exam that I had afterwards. But to my surprise during the exam, most of the questions were new and they never came up on like previous exams. Um, a few of them were like variations of stuff that I've seen from the past papers, so that was fine. Um, and the way the exam worked is that you had five different questions with A or B in them. And so you always had the option to choose between A or B uh, for five of the questions, but you couldn't just do like the five first and then leave um, the five afterwards undone, you know? you had to choose between A or B. And so for a few of those, um, I remember there's like one question where I had no idea how to answer to like neither A or B and I was like, crap, what am I gonna do? Um, so then I answered to the other questions and then with time, um, you know, I sort of like figured it out and wrote something out. And the physiology ACQs um, were one or along as well. Um, and yeah, they were a bit harder than expected really because um, there were different topics and the previous series exam and so I don't recommend you doing that for physiology don't base yourself on the previous years exam uh, but yeah I'm gonna wait for my grade and we'll see how it went and then moving on to my next exam which was Wednesday the biochemistry exam so we had two parts of that exam we had um, the essay questions and then the MCQs so for the essay questions we had seven questions and we had to answer to four of them so that was uh, that was fine you know uh, compared to physiology, for example, because in this, um, the question that I prepared for from previous years actually did come up on this exam as well. Uh, there were slight variations, of course, but the general topic uh, was the same. So, you know how I told you an example of questions like, uh, write about the Krebs cycle. Well, you know, we had very similar questions on this exam. So uh, I think that went a lot better than physiology because what I had prepared actually did come up on the exam. So um, that's great. You know, it made me feel good <laughs> compared to after physiology. But yeah, the way I prepared for that, uh, I think it was very good. You know, looking at the past papers and seeing the most relevant topics. Um, so I guess it's a bit of trial and error because it did work for biochemistry, but not for physiology. So I guess, yeah, I'm gonna know for next time. And then for the biochemistry MCQs, uh, well, you know, it was just uh, normal MCQs based on the things that we've seen. Um, however, I did miss uh, a few because I didn't study all the specific details like uh, organic chemistry details like of isomers and uh, enantiomers and stuff like that or like uh, specific reactions uh, that we had to learn. I'm, I focused more on like general topics of like explaining stuff uh, for the essays rather than the MCQs, but it was, it's okay because uh, they're only worth 10% of the exam, whereas the essay questions are worth 90%. So, you know, I had to make a decision on whether I would focus on all the small little details or on the bigger questions, uh, which I think is gonna pay off, but yeah, we'll see. All right, so now then, moving on to the anatomy MCQs. Uh, those were uh, very fair, you know, they were uh, uh, less hard than I expected. I expected to be asked about some uh, very, very specific ligaments or stuff like that. There were a few questions like that, but not all of them. Uh, so that was a very pleasant surprise because, you know, uh, most of my study were mm, around the uh, lab exam because at the end of the day, it's like the same material. So uh, I learned all the muscles, their origin, their insertions, the nerve supply and their function. 
um, a few clinical stuff related uh, to the muscles here and there. Uh, I learned also, um, you know, the nerves, their, their pathways, uh, blood vessels and some ligaments, not all of them because they're just so many of them. Uh, same thing for the nerves. Uh, sometimes I like I forgot like the way or the blood vessels, same thing. Yes, there's just so much stuff. Uh, we had to learn the whole body except for uh, the interior organ. So, you know, uh, we did like the whole upper limb and lower limb uh, and the shoulder region. So yeah, oh, and also the pelvis. So yeah, there's a, a few things going on there, especially for the blood supply of the, uh, like the hip joint, for example, you know, with the lateral circum circumflex arteries and all the different branches. It was a bit of a headache, but yeah. And then for the physiology MCQs, uh, these were also very fair. Something that I did not expect, however, is to have lab uh, questions. I didn't review the material that we've seen in the lab. Um, so there were a few questions about those, uh, which really surprised me, but yeah, overall they were okay. You know, stuff that um, you could figure out if you forgot the answer. So yeah, I finished my first semester of medical school, finished my first ever exams at medical school. Yeah kind of weird uh, to say that so now I'm on vacation for two weeks before we restart the semester on February 1st um, so yeah for my next exams well I'm definitely gonna change my strategy for physiology because I didn't study like every single thing that I needed to be comfortable and so yeah lesson learned for anatomy was okay and biochemistry was okay as well obviously these exams were different than what I expected to do you know due to COVID-19 the same thing happened towards the end of my undergrad. We had to do the exams at home. Uh, and so same thing for here. Uh, actually, I did my undergrad exams right here at this exact desk. So yeah, it's a bit of a like throwback to uh, the good old days, if we can call it that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to write them down below or send me a DM on Instagram at ov.med. And if you didn't see my previous videos, I'm going to link them right here. So please go ahead and check them out. Please subscribe and see you in the next video.